Hello, hello, welcome to ArcPoint. My name is Marcus, and today is essentially Costumes Part 2. We'll be covering replacing this mannequin geometry with some of your own bits and pieces, and also attaching a costume to an NPC. Timestamps will be in the description below. Let's get started. So, first thing you're going to want is the multiplayer costume example that's on community content that we covered in Part 1. Uh, this comes with a mannequin that a costume gets placed on, and also the costume itself, which can be found again in project content, imported content, multiplayer costume example, dependencies. And then you're also going to want this geometry, well, your own geometry that you'll be uh, replacing the bits and pieces with. Personally, I made this tiny little blockhouse, but uh, it can be really anything. So we're going to want the object selection mode in the top left to be object, not group, because when we click on an object, we well, want to select the object, not the uh, group it belongs to. And then we're also going to want to de-instance the costume geo client context, which is the costume. Uh, this just lets us add our own objects and edit the uh, template. Right. -o. So now we're going to select the tiny party house and press Control c to copy. And now we could open up this folder and scroll all the way to a head socket and then place everything in there, because it's made up of socket groups that attach to the player. Or we can just click on this object which is in the head, and voila, we're there. So now what we're going to do is just select this, press Control v to paste, and we're going to delete the sample costume head that's already there. Perfect. Now you may notice that there is no head there at the moment, and the tiny party house is all the way over here still. Now what we could do is we could just move it using the move tool to approximately where it should be, or we can go to properties, transform, position, and we can manually edit these coordinates by entering zero. 0 and 0. Now it's where the head should be. Go kill. Now we're going to do the same for the shoulder. Let's go the right shoulder. So now we're just going to just open it up, select this, control V, and delete the sample costume. But instead we're going to press revert to default on the tiny party house uh, in position. Looks like an undo button on the right. We'll just click it, and, but we're going to also do it the same for rotation. Now you might notice that the variables for these two houses here are almost the same, but yet this one's angled so much more differently. Uh, this is because these transform positions are in relation to the group it belongs to. So this rotation might be 0, 0, 0, but the group above it has already been rotated. So with all these weird rotations of sockets and positions, I recommend modeling costumes off a mannequin of some sort, or at least a framework that has all these sockets in relatively the right position. Uh, it just makes things a whole lot easier. And another thing I like doing is placing an animated mesh, so that can be found under core content. Uh, maybe like guy, whoop, guy. And then you can just place a animated mesh underneath and just change the stance to binded pose. It's just a lot easier way to model on top of a person. Although you're going to want to press this little lock button so that you don't continuously click on the uh, animated mesh. Oh yeah, so now that we have our house head, we're just going to go back up here, close the group, and make a new template out of it so we can wear it. We're gonna make it house head. And then one thing I just realized is we're gonna have to turn off the camera collision for all of this stuff. So we're just gonna press on the tiny party house, turn off collision. That's the head done. Turn off collision. And now instead of creating a new template, we're just gonna press uh, right click and update template from this. Now in theory, this should work. I'm gonna to go to the costume trigger, go back to project content, 
and drag and drop our house head into costume geo. So now that should be the costume that appears. Neat. Well, I don't know if you wanted to be a house head, but dream accomplished. Okay, and now that we have the player costume relatively sorted, we're going to go and see about attaching a costume to an NPC. So we're going to go to community content, and we're going to type in costume NPC. What you see that will pop up is the NPC costume script by Standard Combo. Uh, but I actually released a NPC earlier, so I'm going to go and use that instead, because mine comes with all the uh, groups for attaching a socket. And personally, I just like my uh, costume a bit better. So we're going to type in CPD. I'm going to remove this earlier costume NPC tag, and we'll see this pop up. Got to slap import. And now that we have it imported, we'll see that it is an animated mesh with a chest piece, a shoulder piece, and two batons. Why two? Uh, just as a hand guide for the left and the right uh, equipment. So if we take a look in preview mode, we'll see it attaches nicely. And yep, he's doing his little wiggly dance. So we see it works and all. Now opening it up in the hierarchy, uh, we're just going to open it up, take a look. And we'll see that it comes with the animated mesh costume. This is the exact same one as the NPC costume script. Comes with an animated mesh with custom materials. And it comes with groups for all the sockets, such as the head, neck, all of that stuff, so you don't have to grab it from somewhere else, it's right here. And then if we open it up, we'll see that there is some geometry underneath that. So really, it's actually fairly similar to the player costume. So you have your main group, and then you have these uh, socket groups, which you place your geometry into. The only uh, different things is this animated script. The animated mesh, and the fact that also uh, these folders or slash groups are actually groups. So you'll notice if you take a close look at the next to the folder icon that there is a tiny cube. However, if we take a look at the uh, player costume, we'll see that it's actually a client context folder used as the socket groups. Uh, you can see it by the tiny little location marker looking thing next to the folder icon. Uh, so that means if you want to copy and paste, you'll have to move it by the geometry inside rather than just copy and pasting all of the socket groups. So instead, we're going to just, uh, let's say, grab this house and put it on this man's shoulder. Should be simple enough. So we're going to just click here. Control C, copy the tiny house. We're going to try and click the shoulder, but we're going to see that we accidentally select the animated mesh instead. This is because the person's uh, collision box is a lot larger than it seems. So we want to stop selecting him. We're going to press this little lock button so that we can't select him unless it's in the hierarchy. And we're going to try that again. Nice. So we're going to de-instance the object so that we can add our own geometry and edit it. And then we're going to control V to paste. And we're going to revert the position and the rotation. We're going to rotate the little house. And we're just going to move it, shrink it. Press F to focus in a bit. And done. So now if we preview this, this man should have a tiny little house on his shoulder. Go kill. So say you wanted to change stance for your NPC character. Uh, normally you'd click on the animated mesh, take a look around and see, oh, animation stance, we can change it here. Uh, but I'd actually suggest not doing that, at least for this animated mesh costume script. Because if the NPC starts in anything that's not unarmed bind pose, uh, say maybe one of the other idling animations, such as one hand melee idle ready, uh, when you start in networked context or a live game, the 
costume will not actually attach properly. It'll be all weird and janky, so we're going to have to keep it as unarmed bind pose. If you did want to change it, you'd change it after the script has attached the equipment to the NPC. So if we crack it open, we can see that it runs all of this uh, equipment attachment first, and then it changes it so that the animation is now unarmed dance instead of the unbinded pose. Cool. But say you went for a less traditional humanoid enemy. Say you didn't want your NPC to have a left arm, uh, such as this skeleton warrior from Hero Born. And you might notice that there is no animated mesh. Well, actually, there is still an animated mesh underneath. But uh, what you want to do is you want to give the animated mesh a fully invisible material. And then make sure that the alpha is zero. Well, and make sure all the values are zero. Because if the alpha is not zero, uh, then it will still be visible. Now you might ask, but I don't want to do a humanoid shaped NPC. Well, you're in luck, there's a community content for that as well. Or community content that will help you along your way. So if you search up socket, you'll see there is a community content for fox sockets, raptor sockets, and dragon sockets by Fuddy. They're a great starting point for looking at the different sockets available on the different animals. And in addition to that, um, if you type in fluid, you'll see that there is a fluid mannequin by Estlogic. Uh, what this mannequin does is it's actually able to tell when a player switches from a female to a male-shaped avatar. So it's very good for when you need a dynamic costume. Awesome, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the content, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you did as well. And uh, hopefully, with any luck, I'll come up with tutorials more than once every three weeks. But for now, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!